Hello everyone, welcome to our circle and Salve Women. For today's reflection, we are going to talk about the price in growing out of innocence. And so when I speak of this, oh, first and foremost, that's just a splash of color because sometimes when your emotions kind of just run through you and you don't know what you're doing, what you're going to make of it yet, that is just that piece that goes, okay, let me see what this will become, but let's just plant it for right now and kind of step back, <clears throat> let it sit, and then we'll decide what it's, it's what is to become of it and so that's typically you know things in life where you don't want to pressure yourself and you're just letting it be what it wants to become and so I think of that in this reflection the price in growing even is out of innocence and really you know innocence is so beautiful I mean I, I love looking at children looking at you know an animal that just really doesn't have an understanding of anything tainted yet. And you can tell because they're going about life with so much just zeal, you know, this, this, this desire to be a part of it all and not necessarily knowing that sometimes there is going to be some kind of a reaction that they may not want to come back to them. And so I think about this as that ignorance is bliss and because even though they're two different words, innocence in, in essence could really be that purity in ignorance. And I know that some people would think, well, that's such a difficult term to use in, in to equate innocence into that. But I'd like to think that sometimes in my ignorance, that's the best part, you know, the part where you say, I don't know the world is willing to give you information. And I know that my children have said, you know, mama, you knew that answer or you knew what that was. And I just sometimes like to step back and let someone else take over. Do I know everything? Absolutely not. But you get more information when you allow other people to shine and you let them be in their realm and you let them decide how much they want to give you and there's so much free information out there that is priceless that all you can do is take in a blessing and sit back and let it come to you and then you get to filter whatever it is that you want to take in and you know being careful as to what you consider to be true and I think about something you know being praiseworthy right something excellent it's like okay I can take that in that's pretty good and you just have to have your armor at all times but when you're innocent there's this ignorance to it because you don't ever know what to take in. And again, that may seem a little bit harsh, but if you really take into that, then understanding that you have, you, you're just that vulnerability of just not knowing what's what could hurt you, not knowing what could harm you, not knowing what could change you and change your world from light to then moving it to darkness where then all of a sudden you didn't even realize you were in there. I mean, this is why, as you know, we hold the hands of children before they cross the street because little would they know that there could be trucks coming, you know, passersby, anything that could end up harming them. And so we have to protect. And I think about our mind being that way our heart, our mind, our body, and spirit. And, you know, it's interesting because to grow out of innocence leads to greater knowledge. And I was always a, enthralled by all the many things that were about, you know, around me. And I think I mentioned to you, you know, I'd rather go sit in a room, kind of sneak in and listen. And hopefully if I sat really quietly, I would listen to all the elderly talk because words of wisdom were just coming out of them and they didn't realize that I was growing and just listening to what they had to say now whether there be some really just great drama and talk or really some substance to what they were saying didn't matter because I wanted to just taking it up take it all in and understand the world even more but unfortunately as you grow and you start to gain more knowledge because you have this hunger for greater knowledge there are just things that you you cannot undo you know, once you hear something, once you see something, once you smell something and taste something and feel something, it's not as if you can go, oh, rewind, let me delete that part, let me edit it out of my life, and that never happened. It just doesn't work that way, and it's unfortunate. Now, although my husband would like to think that I'm fairly good at, what you know, blocking things out or forgetting about it, that's, that's how I truly think that I am. And, you know, I like to just let it go as much as I can, not hold grudges, because I always think to myself that 
that was on them, you know, however they were feeling, however they were wanting to try to impose and or inflict some of their help, felt pain or felt darkness or felt heaviness onto me. I made the decision whether to carry some or just kind of block it off and or, you know, dodge it or whatever it may be. Sometimes you let it in and, you know, it's, it's, that's the difficult part of things that your senses take in because then you have to just absorb it and then all of a sudden you're like make you know you want to make meaning of it and there's just some things in life you don't you wish you hadn't made meaning of and I remember my mock trial in high school just a really just a, a class that I can honestly say has helped me to become who I am in by the time I was in college and you know I took humanities classes and I took my government class and in all of those classes I was just so pleased with all of the open talk the Socratic seminars that we were able to have because I was able to listen in on what other people had to say and my innocence and I want to say ignorance because you know, when you're protected and you haven't seen, and I've mentioned this in my other reflections in the past, where sometimes when you have not been exposed to certain angles and or set certain corners or certain lifestyles, certain ways of life, you really have this pure innocence in you. And then as you get older, you can't say innocence anywhere because, of course, you picked up enough to go, I'm not as innocent as I think I am or would like to portray I am. You know, th there's just that piece where it's like, okay, I'm growing up. But boy, am I ignorant. Boy, I did not know that. Boy, was there something there that was truly missing from my understanding. And I'm glad that I'm starting to see it from a different vantage point. And so in my mock trial, it allowed me to really hear what other perspectives were and, you know, take it in because you have to be good at listening just as much as you're speaking. And I recall in my mock trial classes, I mentioned this reflection that I had missed being able to attend visiting the jail, you know, at the county jail. And I actually, I was very glad because I had heard some of the things, you know, that as m some of my classmates were walking through, some of the things that they experienced. And I was thinking to myself, oh, I'm so glad I skipped that. I didn't have to be a part of that because I could already picture in my mind what would that would look like, whether or not I had to be in there or not. It was something that I felt like, you know, I could, my imagination would probably serve me better than to actually have to walk through that and get a feeling of what that truly is. I don't need to be a part of it. And, you know, sometimes walking through it mentally is just as good as having to walk through it physically. And But the one thing I had not missed that morning was going into a courtroom. Now I had been briefed about this tri this case that was being tried and you know, uh, I hadn't realized though that as I was walking in, it just so happened that one of the alleged perpetrators were on the stand and it being cross-examined by the prosecution team. And <clears throat> you know, as and I'm being briefed outside at, as to what this is about, some horrific act that they had been alleged to have done. And, you know, in your mind, you're like, okay, buy the book, totally get it. <laughs> you know, it's it's like, okay, I'm, I'm aware of those th circumstances that can happen. But when reality strikes, it strikes hard sometimes. And you find yourself respectfully sitting there, listening in as you're processing the meaning of what truly in your mind they're trying to portray happened and so as I walk in interestingly enough I walked in the person on the stand you know looked at me and we met eye contact I didn't know who was on the stand at that time and so I just proceeded quite quickly and quietly I mean it was literally like I can't just half a second if that's even that fast but I quickly came in sat down got the eye contact and I was like oh, okay so whoever's on the stand you know respectfully I'm just gonna listen to who it is and it didn't take that long to realize that the person on the stand was one of the alleged perpetrators and now this had been a horrific attack where a person was ha was described to have been crawling out of uh, af you know and have had escaped this attack and so in my mind, I'd always learned to l listen to all angles, all, you know, perspectives. But as I'm listening, the prosecution team did a fine job of really making the room feel what had been, ha what had happened during that time. Because 
not only did they present all that evidence there, but they were asking the questions as they were, they were presenting each of the evidence. Do you remember this? Do you remember that? Do you remember this when you did this, when you did that? Do you remember this happening? And I'm sitting there, it doesn't take long. You know, it was like I really walked into the heart of the moment where the questions that were being asked were really just the core of the, it, the alleged incident that took place. And I am sitting there thinking to myself, okay, just growing up and being mature about this and, you know, listening. You know, what it is, is uh, it's funny because even though I was just in high school, I felt that I was mature enough to take it in and just sit there and listen. And it was like I was totally indifferent. I didn't find myself gasping for air. I didn't find myself feeling anxious. I didn't feel myself flinching. It was like I was listening. And I really feel that that's a part of you that's like processing the world where you just kind of think taking it in and going, okay, this is what's claimed to have happened. And here I am to listen to this and, and decide for myself what I think truly did happen. I walk out and, you know, just can't remember exactly what it, what had, what my thoughts were after that. But as I recalled in this reflection, I remember my teacher asked me like a week later, obviously they had announced the verdict and he had asked me, you know, what do you think it was? And, and I, I'm not gonna sit here and say, guilty because you know it's weird because you know they you're raised under that you know the love thy neighbor and my thought is always in that belief that you are innocent until proven guilty and so of course and I and I honestly felt you know knowing this teacher that he already sensed what I was going to say and so when he asked me he was ready he was ready to counter it with his his announcement and I said innocent and he and then he told me what the verdict was which is guilty and I just listened and you know he as he uttered the words and as he looked straight at me and I just kind of looked away and said nothing and I was like okay you know I mean it's it is what it is you know I was not part of the jury I was not part of the decision making and I that point I realized this is not what I want to become. If I'm ever going to become an attorney, and I know Papa had always said, you know, you should become an attorney. And I, I love that about him. But at the same rate, I remember by the end of this, the senior, my senior year, I was like, this is, this isn't me. This is not what I'm going to become. I don't even think it was my end of my senior year. I think it was like shortly after that. And I had then, you know, had that one-on-one -on -one talk with him just or one of our nonchalant talks, but I brought it up and said, you know, Papa, I, I don't think I'm ever going to be an attorney. Didn't give him any reason. I think he just knew and then he just had that silence and I said, I don't think I'm gonna become a teacher. And at that point, I was, I'd already made up my, my mind anyhow. Something, you know, that just clicked. I was like, that's the route I'm taking. And it, when in reflecting back, I realized that it was about me not wanting to really have anything to do with imprisoning the innocent and then exonerating the the guilty because my thought is in any of that it's just not fair you know to have any judgment to have any room to have to partake in any of that just didn't feel like it was in my place to do so no matter how good how little you know how it would still seem such little effort on my part to really give justice because when I thought about that case that I sat in and listened, you can't, you know, you cannot bring back the, per the innocence of a person having gone through such horrific acts that, that such a horrific experience that the person had allegedly claimed and had been reported that had taken place. And I think to myself, I, I just cannot, I would rather not be a part of any of that because it's not in me to take that in. It's not in me to want to take it in. And sometimes you just, like I mentioned, you just want to be at the beach, you know, beach combing and playing in the sand and, I, you know, and be in peace because ugly, I realize now the older you get is going to happen. There are people who are just going to choose what they do. I mean, being a middle school teacher, I just had a heart to heart talk today, very quick one with a student just on the side they know, you know, I'm like, okay, beside all this that you're doing, you, you have so much greatness. And yet, what is it 
that pulls you to doing all these other things that is distraction of your learning and it's a disruption of our learning. And you know, when they shrug, they don't really have an answer. And I think back to the very few students that have made some choices that now as adults, you know, you don't, some of them have passed on or some of them have, uh, it, there's one that was incarcerated that I know of, you know, you think to yourself, they were once a child and they were once with me and I saw so much greatness in them and they did some really awesome things. I mean, just to add the student today that I had that one-on-one -on -one with, it was interesting because even though with all this, I'd email the, the parent, I'd call the parent waiting to have, you know, some kind of a communication about the student and so forth. I, even in the message I left, I em empowered, you know, the student by really just giving some praises at first, but then really expressing as to my confusion as to why all this other stuff that's happening, however. And yet, you know, <laughs> today when I ask who's, you know, whose turn is it to uh, wipe the the whiteboards as they were doing their sessions to do some work you know it was interesting because the student decided to get up and do the cleaning and so you know it's like uh, there's goodness in everything and everyone and i i really realized this and so it, i realized that when i gave my opinion as to what i thought the verdict was i was i was really placing hope because i knew deep in my heart as soon as I'd walked out of that courtroom, I made a decision not to really take it in as reality. I really wanted to see somewhat of a possibility that all that I just heard could not have truly happened. And so that's what that mock trial really taught me is to listen in and what other perspectives are and then to make the decision. But the listening part is fun, you know, because there's no harm done in just exchanging and having a debate, my husband to this day probably is just like, oh, woman, you know, because I am a debater. Like, I will always bring forth questioning and because I want to grow. I want other people around me to grow. And it's not for me to say how much they should grow. But for me, it's like whatever I take in is what I want to take in for myself. And, you know, it, there's just that 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 desire for greater knowledge. And I think to myself, you know, if I can just do that though, and just without just having some kind of understanding that you cannot take in all that darkness and let it try it take over you, you know, mastering that is the piece that I think is important to do. And so in really the price in growing out of innocence is that you gr you gain this greater knowledge and eventually the knowledge continues to grow to then become that feel of wisdom and then greater wisdom and then you hope to really have just you know become this erudite just the, the sagacity of your heart your mind your body and your spirit going wow I have this richness that is so genuine and so untouchable that now I can decide how you want to give it to the world and spread it out. And I think that's the beauty, you know, is that you can decide the seeds that you want to plant, but then you have to decide what kind of seed you are actually gathering. And <laughs> maybe that's what they mean by letting the weeds grow out with all of the wheat and then at the end pulling all the weeds out. I don't know, but let's hope that there's not so many weeds by then because, you know, it's just prettier not to have to deal with it if you don't have to, right? So at this point, our power is to plant the good seeds. And, you know, I look at my students, I look at my children, and I think to myself, I want to take a part of that, just that cultivation of good. And I hope all of us do as well. In the words of my mother, God bless us all. May you continue to just let everything in, just innocently, and then be okay with the fact that sometimes, you know, the weeds are just gonna come in, but having the opportunity to be able to then grow the knowledge of deciphering what is good from not so good, so that at the end, we will all have a beautiful garden to just smile upon. Have a great day, everyone, and thank you for listening.